everybody, SC Closer here, Southern Style Studios, coming to you from Studio C. Uh, making another video here, haven't made one in a couple months. Um, I'm posting this in response to something that Bruce had asked about over there on Suave Trainwreck. Um, he was uh, issued kind of a challenge, I guess, for, for us to um, set up our trims on our straps so that we can dive bomb them and go crazy with them and everything and they come back in tune. Um, and he did some crazy stuff with his. I don't know if I'm gonna do all that with mine. But in any event, it's just a Mexican Stratocaster here that I got the trade that I've been messing with. Um, it's got the standard six screw trim system on it. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I got it. Uh, let me turn around this way. I got it floated a little bit. It's just a little bit up in the back. I got uh, the six screws here. I backed off of each one of those about a quarter turn. I got three springs in the back. They're going straight across. Okay, three springs in the back. Nothing else tricky back there. I got the standard little nut on there. There's been locking nut or anything like that. Um, it does have locking tuners on it. They're, they're fender tuners and it came this way when I got it. Um, I don't think that makes a huge difference to be honest with you, but, um, and just to tell you about the rest of it, I think this is a 2011, I believe it's a 2011 strap, uh, Mexican made in Mexico. And, uh, you know, you, you might ask about how I got this set up right now. This is my little platform that I like to play with right now. I got a, 80s super distortion in the bridge and I cut this pit guard to make it slant like that I thought that was kind of cool and I think it sounds a little different like that I believe it's got a Texas special in the middle position um, and uh, I'm not sure what this is it's some kind of a stack humbucker in the back I believe it's a DiMarzio uh, I'm not real sure what it is um, I took it and I only put one pot in it uh, this is just for volume. It's a master volume. It's a 500k pot. I think I took this uh, old pot I had left over out of an Epiphone or something. And I got a little stock five-way switch in there. Um, I'm thinking about doing some other things to it. Uh, the main reason I did it up like this with no tone control is I was wanting to see what it sounded like with no tone and uh, if, I, if this was usable without tone for a gig situation because I don't particularly like having the top volume knob up here it gets in my way um, I always seem to hit it and it just gets in my way um, so I have done some configurations where I moved and had like a master volume and a master tone down here but I found a lot of times on strats I don't use the tone much I use it a lot on, on the less pause but particularly when I'm running a humbucker in the bridge, I never seem to use tone for these other pickups. So I decided I would see what it would be without tone. And what I was thinking of doing is, is maybe if I can get by without having a tone circuit, eventually I might put two master volumes on here so I can have separate volumes for the neck and the bridge pickup. I may or may not do that. I've also thought about putting, uh, if I did that and went that way, that putting like a little toggle switch or something in here and setting up a tone circuit like a Gretsch has. Uh, a friend of mine has this real nice Gretsch guitar and he's got an extra three-way switch up here. And what that does is it throws different capacitors in and out. And that's your actual tone control. You know, instead of having a, a, a pot, it's just got a switch. And I was thinking, well, maybe I could get something and rig it up where it puts a touch of tone or you know a little bit of tone control on something and just flip a switch um so having knobs everywhere you know but anyway that's for a future project but in any event getting back to the challenge um let me get a pick here i'm just playing through a little fender tweed or well it's a copy of a tweed and it's very difficult to keep the volume down on this thing if you play through tweed you know what i'm talking about got a little pedal on the front of it so I can get a little little drive out of it at this low of volume. But anyway, uh, the challenge was is to try to set it up to where um, 
you could dive bomb it and go kind of crazy with the trim and then come back in tune. So let's see what it would do. It's pretty reasonably in tune right there. said basically all I did when I set it up was uh, I took you know push this forward I put a, a telecaster control plate I had laying around <laughs> I put it under here to hold the bridge up to about where I wanted to float it I like to float them because sometimes if you go forward with it and everything if it does come back out of tune you can yank up on it and for some reason that usually puts it back in tune because it, if anything you know catches on either end where the string doesn't actually come back it seems like when you pull up on it that puts it back where it was um so i wanted to float it a little bit and i backed off each one of these screws about a quarter of a turn just to give it a little bit of room to wiggle around and uh anyway i tuned it up to pitch and i came over here in the back and i put the three screw or the three springs on here they're evenly spaced out um put the three springs on here and all I did was you know I just adjusted this claw and I kept turning it in a little bit at a time until that tele control plate I had jammed under here slipped out and I kept checking my tuning as I was doing it so I kept it in standard tuning so basically what happened is eventually when the uh, force of the strings equaled the force of the springs in the back that plate fell out and when that happened then i just went with it from there um and uh, the only other thing you know i did i think i put a little graphite in the nut up there and sometimes i'll drop a little bit of three and one oil or something on top of these saddles just to you know lube it up a little bit and uh, that's about it um and it seems to do fine uh i don't know it doesn't seem to be that big of a secret or anything um I, you know, I'm not a really a strap player. Um, I'm more of a Gibson guy, as a lot of people that know me know. And I don't normally use trims much. I really was messing with this for, for a little project that we're doing where I might be doing a live show that I might need a trim. So I was trying to get something that would work. Um, 
long time ago if I needed that for something. I used to have a GNL Legacy, a US made one that um, it had a pretty nice trim on system on it. It stayed in tune. Floyd Roses and me don't get along too well. Um, I have issues with those guitars. Uh, that's for a whole nother video. But anyway, so I just go with the standard trims. I'm not that crazy with them. Um, and so that's why I have this. But um, in any event, it seems to do pretty good. And I kind of uh, watch YouTube videos and stuff to try to give some tips on how to set it up. Um, I got some tips from watching Will over at Will's Easy Guitar. He posted one back a while back. Um, I actually watched that, you know, probably a year ago or something. Um, and I remembered some of the stuff that he went over. And uh, the other video that I saw that gave me some good ideas was Dave over at Dave's World of Fun Stuff. Um, Dave's pretty good with this kind of stuff. And God, he's got so many videos up where he was setting the trims on straps that, you know, if you watch his videos after a while, the stuff just sticks. So. <laughs> So anyway, so that's how I managed to do it. So yeah, there you go, Bruce, is the answer to your challenge. I just saw your challenge yesterday, so I know you said it was up for about six days or something. Oh, I'm sorry. I just noticed it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I just noticed it yesterday, so I figured I'd stick a video up. All right. SC Closer, Southern Style Studios. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.